American Civil War is the third Captain America movie, the 13th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the sixth film to feature Tony Stark Iron Man, and it is the first film part of Marvel Phase 3 leading up to the Avengers Infinity War. And it is the second film directed by the Russo Brothers, in which you remember they directed Captain America the Winter Soldier, a film that is highly regarded as one of the best Marvel films, and it is my, it's personally my favorite standalone Marvel film. And this is one of my most anticipated of the year. It's up there with Suicide Squad and Batman v Superman. And I know that some people are probably going to watch this movie and pretty much compare it to Batman v Superman and say that it is better than Batman v Superman. And anyone that likes Civil War is going to pretty much be in claim of sucking Marvel's dick. Well, hey, it's whatever. If you like it, you like it. So, let's get into this. So, in Captain America Civil War, the events in the past films had led to people dying. And the government, they feel that they feel that these so-called heroes, they need to be put in check. And so they passed laws that would ultimately turn each hero against each other and to choose sides. Tony Stark, Iron Man, he is on the side of, yeah, we should, we should do this, we need to be more controlled. As opposed to Captain America, he is on the side of, yeah, if we can be controlled, where does it stop? Now, ultimate, now I will say I was a bit worried about this movie because this is a Captain America movie, yet we have all these other heroes and characters in the movie to the point where it's like, is this still a Captain America movie or is this just Avengers 2.5? Now, I am here to tell you that is not necessarily the case. I mean, it does feel like an Avengers film in some parts, but it's still mostly a Captain America movie because this movie is also a sequel to Captain America The Winter Soldier, in which this movie is also about Bucky Barnes, The Winter Soldier. He's, he's starting to get some of his memory back from when, you know, he was a good guy. In Captain America, he's trying to help him out, but Bucky, he is still responsible for the deaths that he has caused as The Winter Soldier, and so the government is out to get him. In Captain America, he's trying to protect him, but then two completely different movies, in a sense. It's a, it's a cap sequel to Captain America, The Winter Soldier, and it is kind of Avengers 2.5, or a backhanded sequel to Avengers. Now, of course, let's talk about the positives. Again, I love Captain America's story in this film, in which he's trying to help out his friend Bucky. And, of course, like the last film, Captain America, he kicks ass. Tony Stark, Iron Man, he's in this film, and he's pretty good in this movie. What I liked about this movie is that it does, it's, it's, no, it's not black and white and there's no gray area, you pretty much see both sides. It's like one minute you're on Team Iron Man and the next minute you're on Team Cap and you, you ultimately you don't know which side to be on. Now I know some of y'all, it'll be real easy for y'all to be like, I'm on Team Iron Man because he has the cool characters. I'm like, no, it's more than just the cool characters, it's about what he's for. Because me personally, like, I don't know which I am, but right now I'm leaning more towards Captain America. Me personally, I feel like there's two things. There's the law and there's what's right. And I'm also on the side of there's what's right. And I feel that's what Captain America, he represents. And as opposed to Iron Man, he's on the side of there's a law and what needs to be done. And ultimately, you you know he has good intentions and, you know, he's not necessarily bad. He's just he's just someone that thinks he's just doing his job and thinks he's on the right path. But really, it's not all good. But as opposed to Captain America, you know, he he's, he's on the right path, but you don't know if... That's necessarily the right path. You see what I'm saying here? You don't know which side to be. Other than Captain America and Iron Man, we also get other characters. Like, we get a whole bunch of new characters. Like, Black Panther. Like, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know that much much about him going in. All I knew is that he was pretty much the king of Wakanda, and his suit is made out of vibranium, which is what Captain America's shield is made out of. You know? And this movie is somewhat of an introduction of him into the universe and to his next movie. And after seeing him in this movie, I can't wait to see the Black Panther movie that comes out in 2018. Chat with Balls Man, hats off, to, hats off to you, brother. Brother, I can't wait to see what you do in your own movie. One of the cool things I like about Black Panther in this movie is that something happens to him at the beginning of this movie that clearly fits into the overall story of this film, and I thought it worked perfectly. Ant-Man makes an appearance in this movie, and that's all I'm about to say to that, because huh, let's just say he has one shiny moment in this film that I just would not spoil, unlike the vinyl pop figures, if you know what I mean. Elizabeth Olsen returns as Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch in this movie. I just love her more and more as I see her in these movies. And of course, we also get returning side characters like Scarlett Johansson as Black Panther, Anthony Mackie as Falcon, Don Chino as Rhodey, Paul Bettany as The Vision. I'll get more on him later. But the other standout character to me in this movie was Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Holy crap. I'd say he is definitely in good hands in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I definitely can't wait to see his movie. And a lot of people are saying, like, this is the best incarnation of Spider-Man in film, and I want to hold reservations of that, but at the same time, I can't really deny it. I see where they're coming from. You really believe that he, he, he portrayed both sides of Sp Spider-Man and Peter Parker perfectly. I tell you, when I saw Spider-Man in the theater and watching him interact with all the other characters and fighting along 
the other characters and against all the other characters, I was just like, I almost cried because it's like I thought I would never see this. It was just like I couldn't keep a. I had a smile on my face the whole time. <laughs> but again, with Black Panther and Spider Man, those are the two standouts to me. And ultimately, for the time for the time they have in this movie, it ultimately gets me more excited for their movies. And here's a part where I'll pretty much segue into like compare this movie to Batman v Superman. One of the things that this movie has over Batman v Superman is the motivation and the character motivations in Civil War are more better in in, in Batman v Superman, and you understand where they're coming from and why they are fighting. And the Russo brothers also pull it off again with the action sequence in this movie. Like, holy crap. Like, the airport scene where all the heroes collide together, that's one of the best action scenes I've seen in any comic book, in any action film, period. And the fight scenes are just well choreographed. I guess I don't really have that much negatives about this movie. I just really only have two, and they're really just nitpicks. And this is, re and this is really just about the vision in this movie. Like, I like the vision as a character, but for I feel like he was slightly underutilized in this movie because he is a powerful character and I just feel like they could have used him to get out of certain situations and like yeah whatever but for the time he has in this movie it does work though so maybe they're just saving more more of him in feature films and of course Marvel continues to have weak villains in Daniel Brew playing Zemo aka the Brett Baron. By the end of the movie, you understand where he's coming from, and he's pretty much the man behind everything. But at the same time, it's like, I feel like they could have taken him out, and the movie would be no different. But, hey, it's whatever, because I feel like the focus, it was not on him. It was about the Civil War aspect of it, which is Tony Stark versus Captain America and their respective teams. All in, in conclusion, I will say, yeah, if you love Batman v Superman, that's fine. I like Batman v Superman at parts, but watch Captain America Civil War. That's how you fucking do a superhero versus movie. It was great hanging with these characters again and seeing them interact with each other and seeing all the new characters and get excited for not just their films but any other films because by the end of this movie and the way it con concludes you're just like damn how they're gonna get out of this one and how what kind of options are they gonna get to but I guess we'll just have to see and I just cannot wait the roots of brothers they continue to shine and I'm actually interested in how they're gonna handle Infinity War. For Captain America the Winter Soldier, it was my favorite standalone Marvel movie, but now I will say this is. Now I will hold my reservations on whether or not I like this more than the the first Avengers, but as of right now, I'm gonna have the boss to give this movie this grade because they continue to make hit after hit after hit after hit and make quality movies that are actually good in that Warner Brothers and DC, they need to get on. I'm going to give Captain America Civil War five stars for a masterpiece. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get my spoiler review of this movie up pretty soon. I'm going to see this movie again so that to see if my thoughts on this movie change or whatever. And, you know, I might like this movie the second time around. Just I wanted to see the movie a second time before I do my spoiler review to, to really give a more thought-out spoiler review and to see if there's anything I missed. That's it for the day. If you like what you see, subscribe to this channel, subscribe to my other channel. The links are in the description below. And be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, MoviePilot, and Periscope. Peace.